Hello guys, Russell here, and it's uh, springtime in New England. Well, actually it's been spring for probably a month now, but uh, we've had such a terrible winter that just about as I'm filming this video, I would say the snow has ended. The cold, nasty, cold weather. I personally love winter. I've always enjoyed winter. Playing in the snow, sledding, skating, snow forts, snowballs, snowmen whatever snow. Um, I'm 42 years old and this is the first winter where I, um, I, I the affinity has ended. Uh, started early in December of 2017. It was very cold in New England. Very, um, a bit unusual. December is kind of a 50-50 weather pattern. Could be kind of fall-like <clears throat> with maybe some snow here and there. But uh, it was just a cold arctic, tundra, Eskimo weather kind of thing. Didn't care for it. Um, and it just sort of continued. We had a few moments where it kind of got up to 60s back in uh, early March. But mostly it's just been cold and snowy. There's still snow on the ground, little pockets here and there. If uh, there's snow on May 1st, I'll be very disappointed. But, um... Anyway, enough of that. It's been uh, two, the last two days have been very nice up in the mid 60s, which is fine with me with nice sunshine. It totally changed my attitude. I, I was always, I was like in pain two weeks ago. Like, uh, <clears throat> all of a sudden the sun comes up and it's warm and I'm like all chipper and happy. So, that's a good thing. Anyway, back to model building. <clears throat> it's been kind of a weird winter uh, season this, between winter and and spring, uh, things on the modeling bench have been moving. <clears throat> Did a few shows and stuff like that. Um, overall, pretty content. I've uh, maintained a a steady, healthy rhythm of uh, committing to a group build. So my my Shane Smith Smith, I don't know the Sherman group build. I am. Um, ready to paint. So today I'll do a little bit of painting and the Kursk group build, my uh, Panther, I'll show you in a little bit, but that's that's approaching painting status. The uh, Tiger from the uh, Adam Mann's group build, which I guess is still in in perpetuity forever, I guess. Um, it's been a long, hard road that tank, I almost threw it in the trash. Not so much with the building, but the painting. All kinds of disasters befell me. <clears throat> but I got it all base coated. And I'm, I'm happy and I'm just sending that sucker to the camouflage box, paint it up, and, and moving forward with it. So uh, I can't really talk too much about it. I got a lot of things I want to talk about, but overall group build status is good. Even, even that uh, <clears throat> tank killer group build that's pretty old now from last year um, from uh, Tactical Jackalope, my Humvee. I actually painted it. At least I painted the chassis and I painted the interior and, and stuff so it, you know it's everything's in motion forward which is awesome. So um, it's been pretty good. Let's talk about my acquisitions because <clears throat> everything got really screwed up this winter. If you've been watching my channel <clears throat> and seen my videos currently, you've known just that you know I uh, my brother passed away this uh, February, past February, very unfortunate, very untimely death. Um, yeah, he was a avid car builder, and uh, my father decided to. Uh, my oldest brother is keeping all his uh, mechanical car tool things, which is a garage full of that kind of stuff, which I don't really do any of that stuff. My father has allowed me to be the ambassador of his model kit collection, which is was sickly insane. I always think I have a problem, but <clears throat> apparently his was a bit larger. So yeah, he loved cars, all kinds of like antique like uh, customs and hot rods and cars from the 40s and 50s. Well. After doing an inventory, I uh, came to about just shy of 500 model kits in various... Most of them were all in 
complete condition. There were some really some ancient kits from the 70s uh, that were just kind of like parts or maybe partially built. Um, but then just stacks of car magazines and, and car stuff, which uh, was really interesting. You know, you don't really know a person, I guess. I, I wasn't... We weren't tight brothers, you know, so uh, you learn a lot about a person by going through their stuff. I've always heard other people say, and I, I think there's some truth to it. It's definitely a pack rat. God, I found model boxes that were empty that were filled with just random crap. Stuff he probably picked up on his way from school <laughs> when he was a kid. Just army men and dice and marbles and just stupid little kid things. I'm like, ugh. Crazy. Gotta learn to throw stuff away, which is what I'm trying to get to. So anyway, I acquired all these cars. So for example, you know, I got like this kind of stuff. Uh, relatively, it's a repop, but uh, it was interesting. Uh, it's a Ford, what, Falcon? No, a Fairlane. I have no idea what the hell that is. It's a car, has four wheels. Uh, I think I was in shock. <clears throat> when I brought all the models together into the, my room, and just boxes of it, and just, oh my god. I actually thought about taking the shelf and just putting all cars, but I don't have time for that. Um, so, luckily, going through my brother's library, I did find a price guide for model kits. Which uh, it's a, it was probably about eight years old, uh, copyright, uh, but it was a good base, because I was just... Just gonna wing it at a model show, but having that price guide was really helpful to give some um, some concrete prices to a genre of model building I have nothing, I have no knowledge about. So I went to a model show in Maine last month, and I thought that was gonna be an awful experience because uh, you know how it goes with model builders. You know we're all like addicted to this hobby and like they gotta buy, and I had this great vision of like all these model dealers, you know, throwing prices at me as soon as I step into the door, but um, they were actually very nice, very kind. In fact, I've had worse experiences with antique dealers when I used to have yard sales. You know, they push old ladies down, they'd be calling my door an hour before I even posted the time to start, so um, it was actually pretty good, um, and I sold a considerable amount of uh, model kits. Uh, it was a good day. It was so good, in fact, that a friend of mine who was selling models, he had the Bondi 172 Millennium Falcon, and he was going to give me a sweet deal on that <clears throat> if I paid cash, and um, apparently my wallet had seen, had money that it's never seen before, so I was pretty excited about buying it, um, but I did take a moment to think about it and realize, you know, for a month I'd be like, this is a kick-ass kit, man, yeah, this is awesome, and then... Two months later, be like, yeah, that was stupid. Cause I'm not gonna build it, you know. It's, it's a, that's a huge box. That's a whole lot of styrene, and uh, it's alright. It's alright. I got plenty of kits. So what what this is all coming to is, uh, yeah, you got a lot of kits, and being a vendor at a model show for the first time, it overall was a good experience. I thought I'd have like an ulcer by the end of the day, but uh, you know, keep the prices fair. You know, I wasn't looking to. You know, be a profit hound. Just wanted to be a model builder guy, just selling some models. Uh, so I kept my prices kind of, kind of little. You know, not too low, but not too high. Just make it nice. Um, and I sold a considerable amount, and hopefully I'll, I'll keep that pace up. I got another show coming up, and then one in October. Um, <clears throat> but what it's made me think too about with the passing of my brother and the whole stash thing is like, what is the stash like? Am I a model builder or am I a collector? Am I a little bit of both? <clears throat> In the long run, I think, yeah, I, I've been saying this for years anyway, since I've had YouTube. I, I probably, I'm never going to build all this stuff. So I think I'd rather have the money invested in something else, you know. I, I definitely need to be uh, moving on and buying a condo at some point in the future. So uh, it'd be nice to start <clears throat> getting that thing on the ball rolling. So... I think next October, right after the model show, I'm probably going to start dumping some of my tanks and army stuff, my stash. Uh, not big, maybe just 25% of each of the genres, you know, maybe 25% tanks, 25% of my figures going down. Just 
just just to get rid of it, you know. Uh, let somebody else enjoy the build if they're going to build it. You know, that was one of the coolest things I saw at selling the model kits was like, you know, a dad and their son and like buying the kit and the kid's eyes lighting up. Oh, wow, this is really cool, you know. I can't wait to that excitement. I'd rather see that than to see this. This, yeah, it's not that exciting. It's a nice backdrop for my videos. <clears throat> But, you know, I got, like, stashes all over the place. I just just can't keep it. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's a healthy thing. If you guys like stashes, awesome. I just feel kind of mixed right now. And if I feel really bad about it two years from now, guess what? I can buy more, right? Because it could be more models. They're not going anywhere. So, that's all good. All right. Moving forward, what's going on? Let's look at some stuff. Let's look at the Panther for the Kursk group build. And here we go. <clears throat> it's been a good build. I had a, a rough patch with the turret, but once I uh, got to the cha chassis and the hull, things uh, were nice. The only little issue I had was if you look at the the bracket, which is right here. Um, there's some white styrene. I uh, the molding was kind of crappy, and I also made a few mistakes, so I had to uh, patch it in with some styrene. But mostly at this point, it's just small pioneering tools and little dinky things. The one thing that's holding me up at this point is the uh, resin wheels that I want to mold. Seeing that I committed myself by buying the starter kit for resin, I feel obligated to actually do it at this point. If I didn't, if I had not purchased a starter kit, I'd just throw on the the uh, inaccurate timely wheels and just put those on but I got the starter kit I want to try the uh, the Umu resin and uh, make some wheels you know because other things I want to cast in the future next on the chopping block is the Sherman let's look at the Sherman I got a little bit of Brad Pitt built so here he is dun 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 Oops, let's level out a little bit. Um, yeah, this was a nice little kit. It, it came together pretty well. Got all that uh, stippled texture. I have no idea if I talked about this kit in my last update back in January, but this is where I'm at. I actually started painting the road wheels, and I, I will take time to thank Shane, who's hosting the Sherman Group Build. He helped me out. I asked some questions about model air paint. And uh, he set me up with some nice instructions and advice. And I'm painting with it. So things are good. I think I might add some stowage. I want to add, there's usually like a, a board right here where they throw stowage on top. I'm going to probably add that stuff. <clears throat> so that's a good little build. Um, no major complaints. You've probably seen my video of my final reveal of my uh, half track from the uh, half track group build which started a year ago here it is um, used uh, I think AK pigments for weathering and overall I'm, I'm happy with the build this was a, not an easy kit to build at all I, I struggled in a lot of areas a lot of filler um, model shows I've taken it to two um, in open judging, it, it placed at a, with the bronze. Uh, IPMS judging, it's really getting uh, really beaten. If you look at the tracks, it, it kind of, it's not even. I don't know if you can see it here, but it's kind of cockeyed. So I'd have to mount this onto a base. Um, and one of the judges really went up my butt for uh, my window. There's some gaps between the frame and the the glass, and I thought that was a bit much, but you know that's okay. It's all part of the learning process, I guess. But that's okay. Still a good build. I had a lot of fun, and you know, winning medals and things that that's nice. But if that's the only thing you're looking at for model building, then I, I think you're missing a big piece of the pie. So there's that. <clears throat> What else we got to show? I think for builds, 
on the go. That's it for now. Uh, you know me, I got tons of stuff going on all the time. If I showed you everything that I'm working on, <laughs> you'd think I'd cry. I'm crazy. So, um, it's all good. Have there been recent acquisitions? <clears throat> Hell yeah. <clears throat> I, uh, at a model show, <clears throat> two shows ago, I went and I saw this guy selling uh, some Dragon Nash horns. And I got all excited. I was like, oh, Nash horn. I've been wanting to build one for a while and the price was really good. So I grabbed it, went home, going through my stash and I realized I already had a Nash horn from Dragon. I think I have now the premium and the smart kit. And again, that made me also realize the fact that my stash has gone out of control. Like, I try really hard to put a computer inventory of everything I got and still, like, this kind of stuff happens. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that has that problem, but again, that's another red flag of maybe I need to tone down the stash a bit. Um, so builds, let's talk about builds. There is the, um, through international British modeler, uh, he's been talking a lot about the uh, 100th anniversary of the RAF, which is being hosted by some fellow on Facebook. So you'd have to go check out British, international British modeler, and then go follow up on him to go find this person who's hosting that group build. But uh, yeah, just the 100th anniversary of the RAF, and I really have been trying to think that's a pretty cool, exciting thing. So um, I have never built, or actually I never finished a Spitfire, so I got this... Uh, Spitfire Mark 1 is an Airfix kit. Mark 1. Um, you know, it's just like one of those little boxes, 172. It's pretty small, not too complicated. And it's something that I can contribute without getting too invested in. So, um, it's going good. I actually did a little bit of a uh, I gotta remember to take pictures because I'm not posting anything on the Facebook site yet. But I only just clipped the uh, fuselage and kind of did some dry fitting. But so far, it's been a it's a nice little build. For my IPMS club that I belong to, we have this uh, theme. Each year, we pick a, th a yearly theme where the club builds something and then presents it at the time of the finish line. So. Last year it was um, Shelf Queens, where you have a model that's been in the box for some time that you've kind of just walked away from. And the idea was this would be a stimulant to get you the back into building it and finishing it. So last year that's what they did. This year it's called Past the Stash, where you take a model that is complete, you've never started, wrap it up, bring it to the meeting, and everyone who participates grabs a kit. So you get this random kit and then we're gonna build it over the course of the summer and in the fall we'll present it. So I grabbed this. It's a Camel Sopwith Academy 132 scale and uh, for me it's like it's pretty cool. It's gonna be a good workhorse for me because I, I am intrigued about rigged airplanes so Here's an opportunity to uh, work on a plane and rig it, you know, and, and it is a pretty cool airplane, so I'm excited. The one said Academy kit, so it's not going to be a complicated model, I'm gonna bang it out, and just uh, learn a lot from that kind of stuff, so it's, it's good, it's exciting. Um, so there it is, there it was. I really don't have anything else to say. Um, yeah, it's been all, it's been good. Uh, a lot of models. Work has been been okay. Now that the good warm weather is in, I'm not in the the wood shop. I don't mind the wood shop. I, I like it all winter. I built Adirondack chairs and benches and picnic tables and all sorts of stuff. So now that the warm weather is in, we can work outside and bang out all the things that need to get done. So roofing and tearing down walls and things like that so that's okay with me <clears throat> very nice love the fresh air in the woods it's beautiful yep 
I really have nothing to say. So, uh, it's all been good. So, I'm definitely building models, having fun, uh, trying to make other videos with um, my channel. You know, I'm getting kind of not, not, not tired of it, but um, you know, everything I put up is like a build log. And I know, I knew, I know that I mentioned I want to do airbrushing videos, and um, I just haven't been in the mood to really sit down and talk about airbrushing. Maybe that's what I'll do next. I'll just film a video on airbrushing. Finally, just do it, pull the band aid off, and just make it. All right, this is Russ Gosden saying thanks for watching, and I hope everything is going really great on your workbench and in your life, and um, model on. I'll see you again here on YouTube. Take care.